And we're talking about Kobe Bryant against Tim Duncan, which is, I mean, they play different positions, so they're not compared that way. But they're being compared because of when their careers ended, because of when their careers started. And they couldn't be more different. I mean, I would say if I'm choosing one of the two players, I'm taking Duncan. I, I think his consistency, his defense, his ability to protect the paint, I like his, his personality that he brings to a team a little bit more. The results sort of speak for themselves in that regard. But Tim Duncan ain't the guy that you go out to the park and you pretend to be. No, and exactly right. Kobe unless you is. unless you throw up a shot and you didn't mean to bank it and you bank it in. <laughs> and you go, Duncan! You well, know, I said, right I, I said everyone who's ever shot something into a garbage can anywhere yeah. has yelled Kobe right after the shot. I said, when do you yell Duncan? When you, like, accurately fold a bunch of laundry very well? <laughs> yeah, where you wear dad jeans. You, yeah, you, you wear Duncan. great dad jeans and an oversized <laughs> polo. Like, Duncan... <laughs> Nailed it. You got Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 they are different. I agree. But this is what we do. You know, you, you, you can choose to do it or not do it. In, in other sports, you look as overall greatness or you can go by position, depending on what sport you're talking about. And in basketball, you do go by position at time. But then there are lists of, of greatest players of all time. So while they were different players, I agree with that. You know, there, there is going you, – you couldn't have two players that were played at the exact same time to try and say, okay, who was the best of their era? Now, when you start to say that, you're going to bring Shaq into the conversation, LeBron, who's still playing, uh, into the conversation as well. We think we have a question. You know, we're, we're, we, we were trying – maybe overthinking, trying to think of something that hasn't been asked about either Kobe or Tim Duncan. You know, who's a better player? Who played with the better team? Who helped their organization the most? Uh, so we, we, we came up with something very simple and it's at Mike and Mike, and we're going to have you kind of explain it to us. It's very simple. It just says Duncan or Kobe. Why? Cause you can have your own reason. You can go on the court to play. You can go to flashy. You can go to personality. You can go to team guy. You can go to non-team guy, selfish player. If you think Kobe was that unselfish player, you know, if that's where you go with Duncan, whatever your reason is, it can be on the court. It can be off the court. Duncan or Kobe. It's that simple. Go to at Mike and Mike and give us your answer. You got 140 characters. And we already have tweets coming in on the 1-800 Flowers Twitter feed. Hogan65 tweets in, Kobe Bryant left his team's salary cap broke and had no interest in helping young players develop. Give me Duncan on my team. And as far as that point, I, I agree. If I'm trying to win as much as possible, if I'm trying to have someone who fits with as many different players as possible, who sets a, a better example, I think, for a lot of the other players a, as possible, I go with Tim Duncan. But one of the drawbacks of that is that label boring. And we bring it up all the time. And, and some of the least remembered NBA finals ever involved Tim Duncan and the Spurs. He gave the New Jersey Nets the business, but nobody really remembers that. They had a seven-game series with the Pistons in 2005. Nobody really remembers that. With Kobe, even when you're not talking NBA Finals, there are moments. 81 points jumps to mind, of course. Yeah, you, you, real quick, my, uh, Mike, you look at Duncan and, Co and Kobe. Regular season MVPs, Duncan Leet wins that one 2-1. to one. Finals MVP, Duncan over Kobe 3-2. to two. Final series wins and losses, Duncan was 5-1. and one. Kobe was 5-2. and two. Well, yeah, it's just what Robin said. You're... Really, you found the perfect antithesis of each player in the other, which is, it, it seems crazy, the amount of, the way their careers mirrored up, but how polar opposites they are, the model of consistent success. You talked about Duncan, th a championship in three different decades, never missing the playoffs, all of that. Kobe, we saw how the end of his career turned out because of the way one decides to take less money so that they can afford to bring in other talent around him. One uh, chooses to take that sort of uh, thanks for your service, that sort of severance package deal at the end of his career to take all the money that Kobe did, which, again, you never begrudge a guy for no, taking money, no. but you see the effect it had on their team. Like Robin said, you've got the peaks and valleys in Kobe's career, and some of those are on the court, some are off the court for him uh, with everything he went through off the court, certainly. And with Tim Duncan, again, it's a much more steady climb throughout his career. I think you said he averaged a double-double in the first 13, 13 years, years of his, career, of his yeah. career. And just really was that model. One guy, we know so much about him as a person. And even in the last year, learned even more. Kobe sort of decided to become personable. We saw him smile in the last season, which I didn't think was humanly possible <laughs> for Kobe Bryant. And Tim Duncan, we've gone through this guy's entire career with essentially not knowing anything about him personally. You never hear about any sort of details about him. Someone tried to bring up the comparison between him and Derek Jeter as far as the quiet superstar, the guy you didn't hear much That's from. That's in the locker room, I would agree, but 
that's in the locker room, but outside, even Derek Jeter, who was famed for not really having his exploits in the tabloids and everything else, we still knew who he was dating. He was still out there in that high-profile scene in that regard. He was still a guy... And, some of that's a product of the market. He was also in New York right, City as right. opposed to San Antonio. And no disrespect to the Riverwalk, but it's not exactly, uh, yeah, it's not exactly Manhattan and Times Square, huh? Yeah. <laughs> one guy was called the Black Mamba, and the other guy was called the, the Big, Big Fundamental. Fundamental. So you yeah. remember one guy for shooting over double teams, the other guy for keeping the ball above his head. The, the <laughs> other side of that on Kobe is because I've heard from basketball people that him taking that money didn't damage them as much as people think. Also, I don't think free agents were coming to L.A. while Kobe was there. Maybe that's bad in and of itself, but I think there was part of let that, let that era end before you start to rebuild. And as far as how he was, you know, as a teammate, there is something to be said for challenging your teammates. Because, listen, who is considered the greatest player of all time? Michael Jordan. Him at practice was infamous as well for challenging his teammates, for yelling at his teammates, for getting in fights sometimes with their teammates. So while that could be looked at as a negative sometimes, I get it. There's also a positive to it where you're say, I'm the best in the league. Follow me. Follow what I'm doing. Work as hard as I do. I'm showing you this is what I do. This is what's going to help make us great. There, while, while it can seem harsh at times, there is something to that. My problem with Kobe on that was he continued doing that when he wasn't able to play at the same level anymore and that's when I thought it was a bad look and also with, with Duncan just because it's not as in your face doesn't mean he's not doing it here was right, a, exactly yeah, that, well, that's true and also with Tim Duncan you had a built-in guy to do that and pop you knew he was going to undress any and everyone you true. had that authoritative figure where as Kobe you know he was with Phil Jackson for the bulk of his career at least early on there and a guy who we don't think of as that dictatorship type figure who's going to bark out orders that, that, that's a great point that, that really is a great point so a lot of it is a product of your it's your personality but a product of your environment as well both of those guys their franchise really for a while Kobe with the Lakers Tim Duncan with the Spurs we got somebody who has an issue with the word franchise especially when you put a tag at the end of it we'll get to that 